Namo myoho renge kyo. Hi everyone, thank you for being here. Thank you for your support, liking, subscribing these videos helps us promote the Sangha. So thank you for that Bodhisattva activity. Uh, I certainly hope that this podcast finds you in good health and secure. That's a big statement in our world today and I'm it weighs heavy on my mind during the day, just knowing how much greed, anger, and stupidity is going on in the world today. Just these, these wars, these near wars, these militancies, these politics, this... Oh. And if you're, if you're anywhere close to which there's so much of it going on in the world today. If you're anywhere close to this kind of activity, this kind of propensity for violence, and I just want to encourage you to chant Namo Myoden Gekyo. I mean, simply put, Shakyamuni's Siddhartha's entire desire in practicing and, and achieving Buddhism was to remove as much of the component of stress and anxiety from our daily lives. And experiencing Buddhaness is the, 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 the antidote. Namu myo renge kyo, Buddhaness, ah. Some relief, right? Carrying that mindset throughout the day, well, this is all we talk about, right? How helpful, how wonderful, how bodhisattva that is. But um, we live in the latter day of the law, as it were. Meaning we live at a time of tremendous distractions and impositions of stress and anxiety. So please, if for no other reason, Namo Myoden Geiko, keep your practice strong, yeah? All right, let's see how far we get with uh, King Rinda. Just as the foul-smelling Aranda tree exists in relation to the fragrant sandalwood, and just as Devadatta exists in relation to Shakyamuni, so at the same time as the great teacher Dengyo, there appeared a sage known as the great teacher Kobo. Isn't this interesting? From the standpoint of of what value would enlightenment be in your life if your life weren't already set the stage of suffering? If we weren't suffering, what need would we need would we have for enlightenment? It's a strange thing to say. It's a very obvious thing to say. It doesn't diminish our quest of enlightenment because certainly we experience daily the foibles and stresses and anxieties of samsaric life. But, as obvious as that is, Nichiren points out that even in the teachings of the sutras, including the lotus, this dichotomy of opposites Yin Yang, if you will, is evident. Devadatta Shakyamuni. Hmm? Remember, Devadatta even at one point wished to kill Buddha, competing with him for popularity. What could be more samsaric than that? Yeah, ego. <laughs> so it's built into the teachings of Buddhism. Let's go on. He, Kobo, journeyed to China 
study the ch -ch -ch China. What did I? <laughs> he journeyed to China, studied the Mahavarachana Sutra. Oh yeah, and the teachings of the True Word School, and then he returned to Japan. It almost seems as though if you're a contender to take over a position, a political, politically favorable, financially favorable position, it's no different than today, the first thing you have to do is look the part. So if you want to be a contender for Dengyo's position as he's aging and you want to take over that position so you can be, because you don't see that position as being a propagating position, a, a position that takes over the, the, uh, uh, the honor and the, the, the responsibility of upholding the teachings correctly, you see that position as more, boy, he gets a lot of privileges because he's in with the shogunate or the elite. You're already failing. Be that as it may, that is the nature of greed, anger, and stupidity. So Kobo, he goes, well, Dengyo went to China, and he came back, and everybody thought, well, he must know. He's important. He brought back this enlightened view. So if I'm to take over his position, what I don't want is anyone to go, well, what do you know? You've not even been to China. So Kobo goes to China. He knows what he's doing. And he studies and collects knowledge from these other sects in China. Not because he's endeavoring to do a good job of promoting Buddhism, but because he wants his arsenal of rhetoric and knowledge to sound authoritative. I know what I'm talking about. Dengyo's too old to argue with me. I'll take over. I'll be the new one. So he journeys to China, studied the Maharajana Sutra and the teachings of the True Word School, and then returned to Japan. Well, why would he study those sutras and those teachings if that was not his intent? Right? He didn't go to study what Dengyo had studied and expand his knowledge of Tendai and so forth. No, he went with the express intent of being a usurper. While the great teacher Dengyo was still alive, Kobo did not forci forcibly, forcefully assert his contention that the Mahavarachana Sutra is superior to the Lotus Sutra. No, he waited. Because even as old as Dengyo was at the time, his argument was so rock solid and Kobo was such a worm, they thought, I'll give away the plot here and Dengyo will crush me and make me look stupid. So I'll wait. I'll wait till his formidable knowledge is out of the way. But after the great teacher Dengyo passed away on the fourth day of the sixth month in the 13th year of Konin in 822, the, um, he apparently concluded that the time had come to do so. Okay, he's dead. Now I'm spring forward. Thus, in the 14th year of the Konin era, on the 19th day of the first month, the great teacher Kobo produced a document in which he ranked the true word teachings first, the teachings of the Flower Garland School second, and those of the Lotus Sutra third. Still included the Lotus Sutra because he thought, let's not get too carried away. But he didn't even give it second place. He made it third. He also asserted that the Lotus Sutra is a doctrine of childish theory that Shakyamuni Buddha is in the region of darkness and that the men of the Tendai school are thieves. They just stole 
these teachings from other places, true word. I'm always fascinated because we run into this in the history of Buddhism, certainly in Japan, and as Nichiren talks about it. This assertion that's made throughout the history of Buddhism that Shakyamuni didn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> it, it, this just bends my brain. Dude, Shakyamuni is Buddhism. It's his enlightenment he taught for over 50 years. Who are you to come along and say, yeah, but he didn't know what he's talking about? I know. I know what Buddhism is. What? It's his teaching. How do you know it better? What? <laughs> I just don't get that. Such is the ego. In this manner, Nitrin continues, he attempted to deceive Emperor Saga by placing his own true word school side by side with the seven older schools and asserting that the seven older schools represent mere expedient teachings, while the true word school represents the ultimate path or the ultimate truth. He's basically using the same rhetorical devices as did the teachers of the Lotus Sutra since Tindai, maybe before. But that Lotus thing, that's just one of those expedient, it's childish it's got to be really mystical, magical people. You got to teach people things that they can't possibly understand, and then they'll respect you. Sounds like religion, doesn't it? It's an easy mechanism in an authoritative hierarchy. And yes, it's everywhere, not just Buddhism. In the period that followed, everyone throughout the country of Japan became a follower of the True Word School. Well, of course they did. We don't want our heads cut off. Let's just do what they say is right. In addition, a disciple of the great teacher Dengyo named Jikaku also journeyed to China, where he made a thorough study of the secret doctrines of the Tendai and True Word Schools before returning to Japan. Now you hear that and you think, cool, Dengo's going to have a defender. This guy didn't just go study the true word doctrines. He studied the Tendai doctrines as well. So obviously he's going to be able to debate ethically between the two schools. You would think. He wrote commentaries on the two works, the Diamond Crown Sutra and the Susidikara Sutra and founded a temple called Zento In on Mount Ye. Obviously, the sojourn to China lends a lot of credibility to people, yeah? In his commentaries, he asserted that the Mahavarachana Sutra should be ranked first and the Lotus Sutra second, and he put forth countless other erroneous statements, just as Kobo had done earlier. I've touched upon this matter somewhat in my earlier years. Yeah, we've read a lot of documentation from Nietzsche on that. Interesting, though, Chikaku, seizing his own opportunity for favor, political favor and position, backs up Kobo. Dengo's gone. But he puts the Lotus Sutra in second place instead of third. So he can maintain some sort of respectability of lineage from Dengyo, I suppose. This eminent teacher was followed by another, the great teacher Chisho, who propagated his teachings from the temple known as Onjoji. Among all the temples today, this one appears to me to be causing the greatest damage to the nation. Among the 3,000 priests or monks of the Mount Hye, there were some who, if Chikaku and Chisho had not insisted upon the point, 
would never have acknowledged the superiority of the true word teachings. But all of them had their mouths stopped and their minds deceived by Chikaku, also known as the great teacher Enin. And no one was able to say a word in opposition, not without consequence, I'm sure. Moreover, the support lent by the ruler and the ministers, there it is, politics, surpassed even what it had been in the time of Dengyo and Kobo, so that Mount Hie, the seven temples of Nara, and indeed the whole country of Japan, joined in declaring that the Lotus Sutra was inferior to the Mahavarachana Sutra. How disappointing. The teachings of the True Word School were now disseminated and hailed as superior to the Myoho Renge Kyo. <sighs> 400 years or more have passed since this situation developed. These erroneous opinions have continued to spread and five sovereigns from the 81st ruler of Japan to the 85th have lost their thrones because the Buddhist way has fallen into decline. The way of the sovereign has likewise declined. Because if life is based on erroneous, egotistical views, leadership is never fully respected because it's not respect worthy and it changes like you change underwear. It's just, gee, what does that resemble? Not underwear, but the change of leadership. <laughs> Not going to go there. In addition to ten major erroneous doctrines known as the Zen school and the minor erroneous doctrine called the Nembutsu school, have joined the great evil doctrine called the true word. And these evil schools now stand side by side, holding sway over the entire country. The sun goddess has lost heart and no longer protects her charges. Great Bodhisattva Hachiman has been sapped of his power and authority and has ceased to guard and defend the nation. In the end, we are doomed to become the prey of a foreign land. So he's recapping many of his writings and predictions and predictions of Shakyamuni as well. What happens if your goals become mere theater? Then you should expect that your whole world just starts to decay. That's basically what he's saying. If you don't recognize the pinnacle of Buddhaness of of anything in life, if your motivations are to just get along to get along, well, then your leadership and your entire environment is just going to get along. You're going to be meaningless. If your hope and your ideals are for maximal potentials, the best, even if you don't know what that is, if your goal is betterment, the pinnacle, then everything kind of falls into line. Things that would halt you are obvious obstacles and you go right by them. But when that's not your goal, then anything that presents itself looks like something to do. This is how everything gets watered down. This is what the word corruption means. Hmm? Nietzsche continues. I, Nietzsche, viewing this state of affairs and fearful of the warning about one who is betraying the Buddha's teachings and about one who will fall into the hell along with those evil persons, have attempted to inform the ruler of the nation of the general situation. But led astray by erroneous doctrines, he refuses to heed me. On the contrary, he has become a deadly enemy, not just of Nietzsche, 
but of need transmission of the teachings of Myohod and Gekyo, the Lotus Sutra, Shakyamuni's teachings of enlightenment. And remember, this is what evil means in the context of these translations. You're an obstacle. You're getting in the way of maximal expression, experience hmm? of potential. Although I try to point out that this country is full of people who would like to do away with the Lotus Sutra, no one understands me. And so they merely go on committing errors of foolishness. And now, in addition, a votary of the Lotus Sutra has made his appearance so that the people of Japan, on top of their foolishness, give way to anger. Oh, I'm upsetting them. Favoring erroneous teachings and viewing the correct teaching with hatred. Because anything that is true and correct challenges the egos of those who don't want to hear it. We just want to go along to get along. In a country where the three poisons of greed, anger, and stupidity prevail to such a degree, how can there be peace and stability? Indeed. In the Kalpa of Decline, the three major calamities will occur. This is straight from Shakyamuni, right? Namely, the calamities of fire, water, and wind. And in the Kalpa of Decrease, the three ma minor calamities will occur, namely famine, pestilence, and warfare. Are we there yet? Famine occurs as a result of greed, pestilence as a result of foolishness, and warfare as a result of anger. And remember, anger in Buddhist teaching is manipulation, backstabbing, one-upsmanship. Oh, does Kobo come to mind? Does Jikaku come to mind? Does Chisho come to mind? Mm. At present, the people of Japan number 4,994,828 men and women. Did they have a census back then? Nearly 5 million people. All of them different persons, but all alike infected by the three poisons, greed, anger, and stupidity. And these three poisons occur because of their relationship with Namu Myoho Renge Kyo. Right? If there wasn't a clear, healthy mind to know, to experience, then why would those other life states be called poisons? They'd just be the way things are. Right? So all of these people, at the same moment, set out to curse, attack, banish, and do away with Shakyamuni, many treasures, and the Buddhas of the Ten Directions. This is what leads to the appearance of the, th the calamities, the three minor calamities. And now, I wonder what karma from the past existences has caused Nichiren and his associates to become the proponents of the Daimoku of the Lotus Sutra. What's put us in this position? You and I. It seems to me that at present, Brahma, Chakra, the deities of the sun and moon, the four heavenly kings, the sun goddess, great Bodhisattva, Hachiman, and all the major and minor deities of the 3,132 shrines throughout Japan are like King Rinda of past time. In other words, all of the various forces that we can talk about politics, we can talk about wars, we can talk about whatever. Look at the world today and look at the mechanisms that move economics, politics, all of it, right? In this case, there are these personifications of these mechanisms, that the white horses are Nietzschean, and the white swans are my followers. And so to silence us, emulators of Nietzsche, take this personally because that's how it's meant, 
our practice, our chanting, our study, our resolve in Buddhanes is the white horses of King Rinda. But those white horses, remember, they won't neigh, they won't chant, they won't sing without the white swans. Study, practice, the Daimoku. How can you chant if you don't have the Daimoku? How can you chant if you're not also inspiring others to walk this path? The neighing of the white horses is the sound of our voices chanting Namo Myoho Renge Kyo. Did I predict that or not? When Brahma, Chakra, and the deities of the sun and moon, the four heavenly kings, and the others hear this sound, how could they fail to take on a healthy color and shine with a brilliant light? How could they fail to guard and protect us? We should be firmly convinced of this. In the memorial service held this last third month, you donated numerous strings of coins. As a result, this year we have been able to support over a hundred men at this mountain dwelling, and they are able to read and recite the Lotus Sutra and discuss its doctrines all day long. Congratulations, that's what we're doing. In this evil latter age of obstacles and distractions, right? This represents the foremost Buddhist practice in all of the world. Jampudvipa. How pleased your departed ancestors must be. Shakyamuni Buddha said that a person who observes filial piety deserves to be called a world-honored one. Are you not yourself such a world-honored one? Are you not a Buddha when you practice diligently resolved to instantiate Buddha in your experience of life? Are you not Buddha? Of course, this is what we do. We emulate Nichiren, who emulates Shakyamuni. Self-realization. Hmm? The matter of the late Acharya Daishin was surely most regrettable, but we should consider that what has happened will serve to further spread the teachings of the Lotus Sutra. In my life, if my life is spared, there are many other things I want to write to you about on some future occasion. Nichiren, 7th day, 8th month, year of Koan, 1279. Cyclical sign, Chichinotou, reply to Soya Doso. Wow. There's a whole, there's a lot of background on this letter. I'll let you read that for yourself. Again, this was a letter to a young man thanking him for his gift, his gift to practice Gohonsen. And he ends on a note that says, this is it. This is the core of practice. Your dedication, your support for the aid of others, the Sangha, the Bodhisattva activity, right? Are you liking? Thumbs up? Are you subscribing? Hmm? And these gifts to Gohansen's patrons, every month you do that, you support Gohansen. Thank you so much. All right, a short, short letter ends this book from the Gosho White Horses and White Swans. <laughs> How convenient. We'll save that for the next video. In the meantime, please take care of your health. Keep yourself secure. 
Namun Yoren Gekyo, most of all, keep your practice strong. From that, everything else emanates, instantiates. Yeah? Don't forget to use the full breadth of these resources. Yeah, we got a thousand videos on this channel. Do use the search engine and look and to help you look through them. Otherwise, you'll never get there, right? Choose a shirt, uh, a, a search term or terms. Hmm? Get a result set. Use the threefoldlows.com website. There's a lot of information you can read or download there, including links to the mandala page, to the bookstore, etc. And the ebooks now that you can link to directly through there. I'm especially as excited to hear from you uh, international members of our Sangha huh? and let me know how that works for you because I have heard in the past how difficult it is to order a print volume with tariffs and taxes and shipping. It gets outlandish money-wise, but a, a simple digital book for a very uh, small price. Much more available. I know I, not everyone likes to read on their computer, but, but to make that information available and then you can search it and study it. I mean, I'm excited about that as making the teachings more available worldwide. Yeah. Again, take care of yourself. I'll see you in the next one. Namu Myoharin Gekyo. Bye for now. Your name is Kyo.